Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interest in life.com. You're joining me on board good old Narrowboat Tilly and today we are having the November Narrowboat Life Update. November being a slightly different month to most of the months of the year because it is the first full month of winter mooring of the 2014 to 15 winter mooring period which lasts for five months from November through to March and basically if you pay a fee then you can moor up at various places along the canal and not have to worry about the 14 day rule. There's all sorts of general rules associated with that. I'll put a link in the description below to a proper video where I talk about the winter mooring rules but I just really wanted to talk about how life has been over the last month afloat and also how having that sort of end of travelling and the sort of winter really starting to settle in has altered life and what it's been like afloat. Of course, probably the first thing to mention is the fact that because I'm on winter mooring, I obviously haven't moved the boat really. I've moved just around the corner, but for almost all of November, this was the view and the scenery through the windows and from the stern. And as you can see, what a beautiful place this is. One of the most common pieces of canal that I've walked along for goodness knows how many years now and it's great over the winter to roll up and be able to moor up the boat here for a few months. Unfortunately however that cliff was taken on a very good day because the majority of the time it has been raining or at the very least very overcast. We haven't had too many really super cold frosty frozen nights but when we have had them probably just like two or three maybe four or five it has been extremely chilly and as you can see this was biking back to the boat one night after work and that's how frozen over everything was. This is the one trip that I've done during November, apart from maybe the 1st of November. This was earlier on in the day when I was recording that clip on the boat. And this was literally about a four minute uh, trip just around the corner. And we'll have a look at the view later on at where I am now. And because obviously it's winter and it's well, well the first month into November. And as you've seen, we've had some pretty cold nights. The reason that I've done this trip just around the corner, literally, as you can see, just around the corner where that turning point or the turning point we're currently in is, is because it makes it a lot easier to get uh, supplies such as wood and coal, which me and my granddad will be heading out with our little um, sack truck and getting a few bags of coal and then coming up from just where that bridge is, uh, pulling a few bags of coal down. Once upon a time, I did fetch the coal all the way from Chirk, which was a terrible idea by hand. I'm going to say I'm going to wrap up filming for the moment and we will return to this exact spot at a later time tonight to carry on this video and well through the miracle of editing hopefully on the count of three everything will look a little bit darker but hopefully I'll still be visible on the camera. One, two, three, let's go. And here we are with a lovely nighttime scene behind us now. And it's got to be said that I'm absolutely loving these new lights. This is the first time that I've put the second set of lights down at the very front of the boat there. And there's just something lovely about them there. These um, warm white LEDs rather than the brilliant white lights that we're very often familiar with when it comes to proper LED lighting. So they've got much more of like a candlelight sort of tone to them rather than just a brilliant beaming white light such as the one that's lighting me up to do this filming right now. And it's got to be said that this is one of the things I've really enjoyed over this uh, first month of winter mooring having these early nights which although it means obviously I'm using the proper lights a lot more and running the engine every couple of days just to keep the batteries topped up because really to be honest I much prefer to have these sorts of lights on and have this lovely cosy environment and only switch on the proper lights when I'm cooking or doing something proper that needs a lot of proper actual light. One of the things that I'm enjoying about this winter in particular is that because Chirk Tunnel is closed just up that way it means that there's not a lot of people who want to travel up here and go up to the aqueduct, cross over and turn around and come back down. It's always quieter in winter, obviously, compared to the summer. It's unbelievably quiet compared to the height of summer. I must point that out in any general sort of winter up in this region that I've seen. But by having it completely closed up that direction obviously means you're not getting any traffic from that way. No holiday boats, nothing at all from the marinas all up there. And equally as there's stoppages coming in and out down that way, 
there's sometimes no traffic able to go forwards or backwards from this little stretch. So for me, who's just here on my winter mooring and able to get on my bike and get in and out of town and do all of my commuting and generally get supplies and get buses, I mean, that's absolutely fine for me. And the fact that there's no boats going past means it's extremely calm and quiet. And uh, over all of November, and considering that I've been on board and on the boat during the daytime a lot more recently, I'm sure that I've only seen two yeah two boats in the whole of November go down the canal obviously it could have been more but then again thinking about it as soon as that Chirk Tunnel is closed there's maybe two boats between me and Chirk Tunnel and they're obviously not moving anywhere but if they were both coming down here on the same day then that would literally be all of the traffic that can actually get up from that side of the boat so two boats from one direction is not too bad at all and because of that I've been able to just be on board total calm total quiet and I've got a lot of painting done recently there's been uh, I did a lot of painting over the summer and then really sort of got distracted and never quite finished it off so there's been a lot of stuff just needing one last coat to really make it shine and really fetch it up to standard and I'm looking around and looking at those bottom doors which I have forgotten to give a proper coat to as I was saying that I turned around and thought you know what I haven't done those the one thing I keep going don't forget the doors don't forget the doors but things like the cupboard doors the ceiling and now my last job is basically to go around with a little paintbrush and tidy up all of the little blue details that are all over the place in places such as this. As we have a look from the current mooring place from around the corner you can see the local geese there my most prominent and noisy neighbours and if we have a look from on board the boat just at what the view's like through the window there's the geese again you should really prepare to see these geese an awful lot over the coming months because they are always somewhere especially in this region once upon a time because they were causing so much disturbance and noise just around the corner at Chirk Bank they did all get carted off somewhere else and as well, as you can imagine, being birds with wings, they soon find themselves back here. So this is the view as we've seen, straight down the front and the poacher's pockets just up there by the bridge. And I really do just absolutely love this area. And it's great to, as I say, be able to spend a lot of time down here over the winter months. And equally, once the canal is all open again, I'll be turning around and heading down to St. Martin's and being able to fill up with water and stuff down there. But for now, I am on water rations just in case. But luckily, there's been enough water falling out of the sky that, well, my goodness me, I think that all you've got to do is put some soap in your air and then go out for a walk and you've had a shower. So that's obviously a joke. I just want to point that out very clearly. That was definitely a joke. <laughs> so... As we have a look at a few different little clips, I'll just say really, speaking of rationing, I thought that this year as the cold months and the cold weather started to set in, I'm not going to try and sort of ration me coal and do it as cheaply as possible and I'll just say, right, if I wake up and I think, yeah, I'm going to put a bit of coal on there because I want to go out for a walk and I want it to still be warm when I get back or get it piping hot and not have to worry about topping up every so often with wood and stuff like I normally do through the day. I just thought I'd throw this clip in because, as you can imagine, it's the end of autumn and it's just, ah, oh, it's beautiful. The trees are just sort of losing their real sort of shiny golden colours, but it's still fantastic to be walking up and down the canal and having this as the start and end to your day. Um, but yeah, going back to the coal thing, I thought... I'm not going to go uh, too wild on rationing and just going to have basically a nice comfortable winter and even with that I've still only used two bags of coal in the whole of November and uh, those little fire log things that cost a pound each I've been cutting those into thirds and using those as a quick way to light the fire or just top up with a little bit of extra heat if I um, feel that I just want a little boost if I'm say waking up at eight o'clock in the morning and then not going out until 10 o'clock or meeting somebody a bit later in the morning and think well I'm not going to start a proper fire or put a lot of fuel in so I've just been putting a little bit of a heat log thing in which are just sort of compacted sawdust I suppose if you're unfamiliar with them so it's things like that that I've been doing a lot more than I have done previously. But as I say, even so, I've still probably only used maybe... Um, it's really difficult to say, you know. Hey, I've maybe used £25 worth of fuel over um, the first month of winter mooring. 
And I don't know if we're going to have a nice easy winter like we did last year where I was sometimes not using much of the fire at all until really late on at night, especially when I was down at St. Martin's because it's a nice big flat sort of open area. So you can literally have the boat, if it's a sunny day, being warmed up very nicely by having the sun beaming against the side for eight hours all day long. And then only when it gets to the early or late evening when the sun's gone down and the cold starts to seep in through the boat again, do you have to really actually think, oh yeah, should really put that fire on. Especially, obviously, if you're cooking in the evening, then that means you're putting a little bit of heat into the boat, depending on what you're cooking. Or if you're running the engine to charge the batteries on Tilly, there's a radiator that runs off the engine on the inside as well. So, like I say, it's all about just being comfortable this year, not going too stingy or thinking right what's the cheapest I can possibly get through the winter by because at the end of the day well it's not as if I go around buying cars every day or something like that so I'm sure I can treat myself to a little bit of extra fuel if I wish to be nice and relaxed anyway that's been a completely random chat about some of the things of the first month of winter mooring it's been thoroughly enjoyable and as I say because the canal's closed all over the place it's been fantastic to just have almost a private canal once again which to be honest sometimes even at normal points over the winter it's practically you're the well I've literally been the only boat for miles around at some points during the winter and it's certainly not looking like it's going to be too different this year anyway thank you very much for watching check out my other videos for loads of general boaty bits and plenty of walking and biking and kayaking and all sorts of things from the great outdoors. Until the next time, subscribe, check out my other videos. Feel free to add me personally on Facebook and Twitter if you want to see general life updates and photos from the canal. And check out my books for the Kindle. Search for The Narrowboat Lad on Amazon. And, well, until the next time, keep it boatworthy. Have a fantastic day and farewell. Oh, and one last thing. Please be sure to stay tuned for the bonus boat video of turning on the Christmas lights later this week. Until the next time, farewell.